while I was growing up, I was obsessed with Superman. And apparently, I had no shame. <laughs> while I was growing up, there was a real Superman who changed my life. This is my grandpa, Ben. Grandpa was a second generation American without even a high school education who worked in a factory his whole life so that all four of his kids could go on to get master's degrees. He was a real superman, at least until he was faced with a supervillain, diabetes. As one of the leading causes of amputations, grandpa's superpowers could only take him so far against this supervillain. I remember sitting out in the hall and hearing grandpa desperately cry out, don't let them take my leg, please. Don't let them take my leg. The next time and last time that I saw my Superman, he still had his leg, but according to his wishes, the diabetes-induced sepsis, which caused his desperate cries, took everything else from him. There was my Superman, pale, still, and lifeless, laying in an open casket, defeated by diabetes. And while Grandpa's light went out, his death lit a fire inside of me, because I came to quickly find out, Grandpa's not alone. Did you know one in four of us are afflicted with diabetes or prediabetes? Just a few generations ago, only one in every 4,000 of us was afflicted with diabetes. That's a 100,000% increase. To further scope this problem, let's compare diabetes with another health supervillain, tobacco. In the US, tobacco-related health care costs are $90 billion per year. That's bad. Diabetes-related health care costs, $140 billion per year, or $50 billion per year, greater than all of tobacco. And while this may seem just overwhelming, if we can free ourselves from the obsolete nutrition theories that got us here, and instead celebrate modern science, just the opposite can be true. For instance, let's go back to the tobacco smoking comparison. Decades ago, researchers showed us the simplest way to avoid lung cancer, avoid smoking. They didn't tell us smoke in moderation or just smoke smaller cigarettes or, you know, smoking's really not so bad, just make sure you exercise more. They told us avoid smoking. Consider this along with recent research where scientists studied 175 countries and discovered what seems to be the simplest way to avoid diabetes. Avoid added sugars. So could it be that like lung cancer isn't avoided by smoking in moderation, smoking smaller cigarettes, or smoking on a treadmill, that diabetes is not avoided by eating added sugars in moderation or just from, ah, they're only 100 calories, smaller sugary snack packs, or by trying to cancel out added sugars with more time on the treadmill, but simply by avoiding added sugars. In fact, when you consider that nearly two-thirds of all added sugars come from just three products, soda, candy, and juice, and that the companies who are producing cigarettes, they're the same companies behind leading soda, candy, and juice brands. I wonder, is it reasonable for us to start asking, is added sugar the new smoking? Because if it is, what would we do differently? For instance, how would you treat Soda, candy, and juice when it comes to your children. 
Or how would you treat yourself when it comes to these eating disorder inducing calorie counting schemes that encourage you to skip breakfast and lunch so that it's okay to eat a bunch of added sugars with dinner? And most importantly, is this analogy just empowering as hell? Because if added sugar is the new smoking, do we already have proven anti-smoking inspired policies that could help save the lives of one in four of us while helping to do away with the healthcare crisis by eliminating the tobacco dwarfing economic burden of diabetes? If added sugar is the new smoking, can you immediately see how you can heal and protect yourself as well as your loved ones and how I may have been able to save my grandpa's life. If added sugar is the new smoking and we let the tragic global impact of this problem and the simplicity of avoiding soda, candy, and juice light a fire inside each and every one of us, could we all become real life supermen and real life superwomen? Because today, we can save the world.